Even with AI or text parsing tools, getting neatly structured data out of a PDF email attachment can be tricky. Thankfully, there's a tool that makes it simple to convert tables from a PDF into a CSV, and it integrates very well with Zapier too. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use and automate PDF.co. Hi, I'm Tom from X-Ray Tech, the workflow company. At X-Ray, we enable our members and clients to streamline their everyday workflows with low-code automation, AI, and any tool that helps them get the job done. If you'd like to learn more about X-Ray and our services, check out our website at xray.tech. To see more low-code tips and tutorials every week, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new way to save time. In this video, I'm going to quickly show you what PDF.co is and how it works. Then I'll show you how to automate PDF.co with Zapier so you can neatly integrate it into your workflows without adding more manual tasks to your to-do list. Let's get started. This is PDF.co. It's software dedicated to parsing data from PDFs and it's super useful. Here, you can see some of the big companies that use it. Most importantly for us, there's also integrations with Zapier and Make, which we'll get into later on in this video. First, we're going to start by looking at how to use PDF.co through its own user interface, which isn't the prettiest thing in the world. But if you don't mind the lack of polish, you can absolutely get the job done and convert your files. After I log in, I'm gonna start by clicking on Dashboard. Inside the dashboard, you see the number of credits that you have. You're given 10,000 credits on the free account, so it's a pretty good place to start. Your API key is right here, front and center so you can easily copy and paste that to integrate it into Zapier or Make. And there's even AI parsing and some other popular tools that PDF.co likes to brag about. We're going to get started by clicking on API tools. Now that we're here, we're gonna scroll down a little bit to PDF to CSV. Notice that there's a lot of different specific conversions that you can do depending on what you want the PDF to be transformed into. We really want structured data so we can automate a little bit better. And we're gonna pick this PDF to CSV option. Now, if you've never worked with code before, this might look a little overwhelming, but I assure you almost everything here is optional. The only thing that's really necessary is the uploading of your PDF. So we're gonna be using an invoice PDF today, and we wanna translate this into structured data in a CSV. Now that the PDF is added, you can see it here on the right. All of this description on the right is just giving you extra context for these optional settings here. But the only thing that I will edit on these options is this line grouping section. If we enable line grouping, that will help to ensure that the CSV doesn't spit out multi-line text into multiple cells. To enable it, the tip on the right says we just have to enter the number one into the quotes here. And then we're ready to run our request. PDF.co just converted the PDF to a CSV, and you can see the output preview right here by clicking on this result.csv. It looks pretty good, but it would be nice to download it and open it up in a real spreadsheet application. So I'll click download file as, and it just got added to my downloads folder. Once I open it up and import it into Google Sheets, you can see that all of the information is actually in different columns, and it looks pretty good. This first row has a lot of messy text, as do the last few rows, but this is just text from the PDF that wasn't part of a chart. It will be easy enough to just delete these rows from our sheet. Every other line item actually separates out the unit price and the total and the quantity, which is really useful for me. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this first row, and this last row here, last couple of rows rather, and that's it. Now we have a structured data CSV that we can actually use to do some analysis on if we want to. Nice. Just for comparison, this is what the original PDF looked like. Ultimately, it's not too complicated to use the manual interface, but if you'd like something more user-friendly and automated, you can always connect it to Zapier instead. Zapier is a no-code automation provider, so when an event happens in one app, you can run automatic actions in other apps. You can learn more about Zapier in our Zapier Beginner's Guide, which is linked on the screen here. In this video, I'm going to quickly show you how to connect PDF.co to Zapier and build an example Zap. We'll build an automation that runs whenever we receive an email with a PDF attachment. 
like this example email in my inbox here. Then the automation will convert the PDF to a CSV using pdf.co and attach the exported CSV in a reply to the original email. First thing we're gonna to wanna to do is add pdf.co as an integration. So I'm going to add a connection, search for PDF, and pdf.co is the first one. Now it's going to ask me for an API key, which we saw earlier. So if we go back to our dashboard here in pdf.co, we get that API key right in the front. So I'm just gonna copy and paste. Now our X-Ray Tutorials PDF account is connected to Zapier. Now we're ready to create a new Zap. Remember, we're getting this PDF over email. So we're actually gonna make a trigger that is based on our email. So we're gonna to go to Gmail. And the trigger event is going to be a new attachment. So whenever we receive a new email with an attachment, this automation will run. We're gonna connect our Gmail account. Authorize Zapier to use Gmail. And configure our trigger. This is going to be on our inbox and we don't need to add a search. So we'll continue and test the trigger. And here is our first email with an attachment. You can see there's a bunch of data here that Gmail is able to pull in to Zapier. We don't really need everything. The thing that's most important here is the attachment. So let's search for it. And we actually get the attachment ID, the attachment details, and a whole bunch of other variables here. This is all great, but the thing we really care about is the attachment itself. You can tell that this is a file because it's referencing Zapier dev files on S3 Amazon. And this is typically how companies, especially Zapier, store files. So we're ready to go. So we'll continue with this selected record. Now the next step is just gonna be pdf.co. The event is gonna be PDF to anything. We already connected our account. And now we select the output format. CSV is what we want, but you can see that there are a bunch of options here, depending on what you're doing. The source file URL is going to be the attachment that exists, but is not shown. This is very common for Zapier variables. Whenever you're dealing with a literal file, the file will always show as exists, but not shown inside of the Zapier variables menu. So we're going to select it and add it as the source file URL. We don't care about the page selection, but I will add a file name. I'll just select the original file's title from the trigger. So each file that gets processed will keep its original name because that makes sense. The only other setting we'll edit here is enable line grouping. Here, we'll set it to true to make sure that long text doesn't get split up into multiple cells in our CSV. This is a good example of how the Zapier UI actually makes things easier than using pdf.co directly. For many, it's much more intuitive to change the setting to true or false rather than using the binary terms of one or zero. Now we're all set to continue. This is just the test data and we are going to test the step. See that Zapier dev file here? That's what's being referenced. Awesome. So the data out says that it was successful. Error false, meaning that it thinks it worked. But how do we actually get this file now? So we're gonna add this third step and it's gonna be a Gmail step. For the event, it's going to be reply to email. We're going to continue. We already have our account selected. And the first question we get is the thread. We actually get the thread from the trigger. So let's just search for thread. And lo and behold, here is the thread ID. For the to address, we're just going to put x-ray tutorials at gmail.com. We can leave the CC and BCC blank. 
Note that even though there is no required on the two field, it actually is required. They're lying to you. We can leave everything else here blank, but we do need to put a body. So we're just gonna say, this is the newly converted CSV from the invoice associated with the email above. To edit this automation, click here. Note that this automation URL has a bunch of extra stuff on it. We actually don't need anything after the automation ID, which is before the word draft. Last, but certainly not least, we need to add the attachment. The attachment is gonna come from the second step, and we don't want the name, we want the URL. This PDF temp files from Amazon. This is how Zapier stores the newly converted file as a variable. And Zapier is gonna do the work for us. It's actually gonna download this file and then upload it to Gmail as an attachment and send it to our original email. Now we're ready to continue and test. Click test step. Zapier says it was a success. Let's check it out in Gmail just to make sure and see what it looks like. Looks like we have a new email. And here's our original. And here is our CSV. And when I open it up, look at that. Looks just like I would expect. And I can even open with Google Sheets. Awesome. Everything worked exactly as we expected. Now we're good to turn this app on and start using it. So click publish. And you're good to go. Oh, but don't forget to update the name. Remember, words are cheap, so be descriptive. If we wanted to make this a little bit better, we could do one more thing. We might wanna add a filter here to make sure this only runs for PDFs as attachments rather than just all attachments. So in this case, we're gonna make sure that the attachment file name contains .pdf. This will make sure that we don't waste any extra credits on pdf.co to try to convert something that's not a PDF in the first place. So let's publish it and leave a note about the update. And that's all there is to it. So try it out for yourself and happy zapping. Getting data in the right format is a crucial step in streamlining your workflows. Manually copying and pasting and reformatting is just a distraction and a waste of time. With simple tools like pdf.co and Zapier, you can convert your documents automatically and skip all the hassle. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Will a tool like pdf.co help you save time every day? How will it fit into your workflow? And are there any other tools you'd like to see us cover on the channel? Your suggestion could become one of our next videos. If you enjoyed this video, prove you're human, like and subscribe for more automation tips every week. If you'd like to learn more about low-code automation and workflow design, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, and you can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can find all those links in the X-Ray Workflow Resources Board down below, and as always, find your focus and stay in flow.